Hey folks, so if you're here, you're probably interested in knowing what's happening with the housing market and how it's reacting to the COVID-19 crisis. So maybe you're a buyer looking to anticipate a housing crash, or perhaps you're a seller hoping that the property retains its value. There are some interesting facts that I'm going to reveal over that I've already saw that are quite fascinating. But nonetheless, this is Teo Sager and stay tuned. Hey cool cats and kittens, it's Teo Sager here and if you are watching this you're probably anticipating how the market's going to react with the COVID-19 outbreak. You probably already have some speculations yourselves. However, I found out some very interesting information that we will talk about further down along in the video. But for this video in particular, we're going to be doing a baseline video. We're going to over a year over look over from March 2020 to March 2019 and we'll be using this video to look back on once we go further down into the year and then assessing everything up to this point forth. Specifically targeting Los Angeles City, as I always say, it's always helpful to be specific as Los Angeles in itself is a big county. There's so many micro markets, there's luxury markets, there's condos and so forth. So we're going to definitely try to be specific so we can get more accurate data. That being said, if you have any areas of choice that you'd like me to do a video on, feel free to let me know whether it be a specific city or zip code. I can definitely take care of that for you. Nonetheless, we'll be using this website called Teradatum. It's one of my favorites. It streamlines the data from the MLS and just makes it easier for us to absorb. That being said, we'll begin. So we'll go ahead and select area type. We're going to do Los Angeles City. And again, if you have any other areas of interest, feel free to let me know. And then we'll wait for this to populate. Click that. And again, we're even going to be more specific because condos and single family homes are going to have their own data in and of itself. So single family homes. And then we'll do one year monthly and then we'll press search. So our first graph is a medium sold price by month. So over the course of the year, since March 2019 to March 2020, the medium sold price is up 10%. So this basically shows a healthy inch of appreciation for single family homes in the Los Angeles city. What's going to be interesting here, since this is a baseline video and the baseline start of how we're seeing this information is when we revisit this information further into the future, uh, during this whole outbreak in and of itself. So yeah, we'll stay tuned for that. We'll move on to the median for sale versus median sold. So as you can see here, it definitely puts the information from the median sold price by month in the first graph and it puts it up against the median for sale. Median for sale basically says the medium sale price that's it's listed versus what's sold. You know, there are a lot of conversations to be had with type of sellers and listing agents, how they list properties. However, this definitely shows a discrepancy between the conversations that listing agent sellers are having with their clients and the ideas of what they want for themselves and for that property and what's actually selling as what you can see here. Um, people are obviously are overreaching with their prices, but you know, uh, when it comes to what is a market price, market price is what the seller is willing to sell for and what the buyer is willing to pay for. So this is what this is how it's being reflected right here with the green. That being said, we'll just move on. We'll move on to sold properties by month. March 2019 versus March 2020. The number of sold properties has not changed. Okay. And what's going to be interesting is moving into the future. So let's go ahead and click this 23 number to see the amount of units sold. Um, so 513 units sold last month. It's going to be interesting moving in and um, comparing the data from April and May to see if we're still reaching these numbers of 603 for April and 658 and so forth as this outbreak continues. Nonetheless, let's move forward. The number of under contract properties down 34%. I expected that, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have expected that. So an under contract means you have a property has an accepted offer. Uh, considering the outbreak in of itself, people are not performing as much as you know previous years. Even moving into the spring market, we're going to it's going to be interesting seeing this information as we move forward further into the future during this whole outbreak. But yeah, let's move into the new properties by month. This is interesting. So we're going to go ahead up and go up here, 23, and click these units. So new properties means new listings. So yes, there's 982 listings back in March of 2019, but these two months right here, February and 30, were 
COVID-19 was picking up traction, this is interesting in itself because there's, what, 693 people who are wanting to sell their properties during this whole outbreak. So we'll go over here. For sale properties by month. So for sale properties, the number for sale properties is down 26%. So that means that sellers and agents are having conversations about whether or not to put their own properties on hold or pull them off the market altogether. So that's how this graph is reflecting that. It's re reflecting those conversations that everybody is having. 26% is a lot as opposed to what you expect to see when going into the spring market. So we'll see how this continues forth moving into the future. So this graph, expired properties by month, it's more relevant towards agents and myself only because when you have an expired contract, that means that the life of the contract has expired. So usually for me, my contract lengths are to six to eight months. Some people are a year. However, this is more relevant information for myself because it's, it shows you know what type of conversation are people are actually having with their sellers and those expectations and whether or not those expectations are being calibrated. So sometimes people have a specific idea of what number they want in their head for their property and are they willing to massage those expectations. Not necessarily COVID-19 related so much, but it's definitely something for me to you know look into. Other than that, we'll go into the next graph, which is supply and demand. Basically, it takes some of the information from the previous graphs and it puts them up against each other. So for instance, the number for sale properties, as you can see, it's down 26%. Um, and the number of sold properties has not changed. So again, moving into the spring and summer months, it's gonna be interesting going back and looking at this information. We do expect inventory to normally rise during the spring and summer markets, but during this outbreak, who knows how we're all gonna act. However, there is about sub 700 people that are still listing their properties in March. and there are still people that are wanting to participate. There's a steady stream of demand and we'll see if this continues for the next month. If you have any interpretations yourselves, feel free to leave me a comment or if you have any questions, feel free to drop them as well. Average days on market by month. Average days on market down by 37%. So I'm assuming this is including properties that have been pulled off the market, put on hold, canceled and or expired. But also this is, basically indicative of how fast people are performing. So if you were in escrow in February or in March, you're probably trying to do your best to make sure that you're, you're able to close on your house and you book closing your loan just because the COVID-19 has developed some turbulence for, you know, financing and people are getting scared and people in the stock market are definitely getting scared. So I'm sure that's igniting a spark to make sure that, you know, these 30 day escrows become less. Usually for me, an average is around 21 day escrows for myself and for my clients, all because I write competitive terms and sometimes sellers just want to be able to get their proceeds as soon as possible and move on. So every seller and transaction is going to be different. Our last graph is the month supply of inventory. So as you can see here, there's about four months of supply of inventory in regards to single family homes in Los Angeles City. Uh, when it hits six to eight months, that means it turns into a buyer's market. However, inventory as a whole is at a low in the state of California, less alone Los Angeles. But again, this is just gonna be a baseline. I feel like a lot of the conversation is gonna be starting to shift once we get further deep into this COVID outbreak because we don't know how long this is gonna last. There's still a lot of opportunities for sellers to sell as well as buyers. We don't know the circumstances or the motivations for so forth, but yeah, if you're interested in selling, definitely have a conversation with the agency how you can definitely maximize on this market just because there's not a lot of inventory and for those buyers who do want to participate because there's not a lot of buyers there's still again opportunities for different circumstances do you folks have any questions about the single family home data let me know but right now we're just going to go ahead and jump into condos so now that we've already got acclimated to the information regards to single family homes i'm just going to zoom through all the condo stuff so medium sold price by month so we know that Condos don't appreciate as healthy as single family homes, but the medium sold price is up 6%, which is, I think, pretty decent for condos in and of itself, and even in our market in regards to Los Angeles City. I think that's pretty good. So we'll move to medium for sale versus medium for sold. So as listing agents and as sellers, we should collectively know that, again, condos don't appreciate as much as single family homes. So your list price is supposed, it's gonna be more well-grounded 
as opposed to a single family home. So it's, that's why we don't see that much of a difference between the for sale price and the sold price. But I do like seeing that the sellers now or the listing agents or their whole camp are now recognizing, okay, cool. You do have to be more aware of the market and how things are calculating. So that's why it's down 2% from March. Sold properties by month. This information right here is to be expected again. When you are experiencing the COVID-19 outbreak, you're gonna to want to move as fast as possible. So I'm sure a lot of people who did open escrow in February or open escrow in March, they would want that wrapped up as soon as possible in regards to complying with the state and federal regulations. And also with condos, you kind of close faster regardless. Um, I usually close condos in less than 21 days, depending on the circumstances. Maybe it's already vacant or so forth, but you know, 30 day escrows, it's not something that I, it's not a norm that I experience with condos in of itself. All right, we'll go over here. Under contracts by properties. So the number of under contracts properties is down 20%. That's to be expected. But there's still 176 escrows that open. Okay. All right. New properties by month. So. That's still 283 condos in Los Angeles City that hit the market. That's still a lot. Even, you know, during this whole outbreak, I find that's a lot. All right, for sale properties by month. Yeah, so again, as we learned from single family home, this is how we're responding to the market. So either us listing agents and sellers were probably either pulling the condos off market, put them on holds, maybe canceling them altogether and waiting to ride this out. But yeah, this is to be expected. Expired properties by month. Yeah, this information still kind of throws me off because I'm like, okay, cool. That means I took a listing in August. Maybe I was reaching for a specific number and I get that number during the winter. And then now, yeah, the, the contract expired in of itself. But I will probably do more in-depth research about like what happened. I can't figure out it right now, but I will. All right, my favorite graph, the supply and demand. Number for sale properties is down 13%. Yes, but the number of sale properties up 2%. Demand still there, even with condos. Condos are a great way to start your home investment, home purchase portfolio. A lot of times in Los Angeles, a lot of people do level purchases. So they'll live in a condo for four years and jump up, move that equity over and buy a single family house and so forth and so forth. But that's a lot of what my clients do. All right, we'll move to average days on market by month. It's down 12%. This to be expected. Um, but this, yeah, I expected this too, just because again, you're gonna wanna wrap this up you're gonna to wanna to be in your quarantine condo as soon as possible and just have all the movers out and just make sure everything's taken care of just so you can be in your condo. You're gonna to wanna to wrap that up too just because of the turbulences people are having with their files. Even with FHA, for instance, they're changing their lending requirements too. Even jumbo loans. Month supply of inventory is down 3%. So, yeah, I mean, with how we're reacting to the COVID-19, people pulling off their listings, just to be assumed. But yeah, so let me know, folks, what you think about the information. Again, this is just going to be a baseline of uh, the year of information of how the market is reacting to the COVID-19 outbreak as opposed to what happened last year. And then moving into the spring and summer markets, we'll definitely revisit this information and then see, okay, cool, how exactly are people handling this? We... As a summary, there's still demand, there's still buyers that wanted to participate, and there's still sellers that wanted to sell. We can only speculate their circumstances, but in the meantime, I mean, whether you're a seller looking to, you know, still benefit from the market, you can still possibly can, as I mentioned, that there's a listing that had multiple offers already, and they just hit the market live. And then there's still buyers that, you know, you, even though there's competition demands there, you have less buyers because there's less buyers willing to uh, to participate, which is something that I always tell my buyers. Like if, if you go where the collective consciousness is going and if you're going to wait like everybody else, you're going to be up against them and you're going to, it's just all going to flood once everything um, settles. And that's my opinion. However, thank you folks so much for watching. If you have any questions or you have any comments about the data that we went over, feel free to drop me a comment. Or perhaps you have a specific area of interest that you'd like me to cover, feel free to drop me a comment below and I would love to definitely make a video out of it. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Bye.
Hey folks, thank you so much for watching Selling of Teo. If you enjoyed our content, feel free to press the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or additional topics you'd like to discuss, feel free to drop me a message as well. Other than that, see you next time.